Good afternoon. Afternoon, madam. Madam. How are you? Good afternoon, madam. Okay, so how many are we now? So I'll, I'll be following through the notes and then where necessary we'll be solving on the whiteboard so that we are faster. Something has come up for 16 hours, so I want to be fast. I couldn't answer the class. During the week, I'm busy. So how many are we now? Let me just check. 21, okay, this is usually around the number that we have. Joseph, Joshua Gilande, how are you? I'm fine, thank you, madam. Okay. Okay, so we can get started. We are 21. Others will join us if I do the, they want to join. Okay, so we want to look at uh, the binomial expansion. Uh, you are not meeting, I'm sure most of you are not meeting this for the first time. We already have some idea. One binomial that we know all of us is uh, just the A plus B to give you two terms, just A and B. Then we've known of A plus B in brackets, then to the power two, that one, we remember we have it and we, we can see it uh, under 7.1.1. So a binomial is the sum or difference of two terms. So we've been given those examples there, a plus b, three x plus five y, p squared minus two q, they are binomials. Now it so happens that we would raise a binomial to a, the power maybe one, to a power two, power three, even to the power fraction. So when that is happening, we would want to sometimes write that uh, binomial to the power something in expanded form. And so that's when we come to do what we are calling binomial expansions. So when it comes to binomial expansions, you can see that example of a plus b to the power three, we are able to expand that. We are able to expand this because a plus b to the power three, we're just multiplying a plus b by itself three times. So, at least there we are able to get it. Now, as we increase the number, the power, you find that it becomes tedious. So if I, it comes to a plus b to the power four, it means I'll get this expanded one. Are you seeing my case, Yes, we are seeing it, madam. Okay, so it means that uh, I'll get this a cubed plus three a squared b plus three a b squared plus b cubed multiply it by a plus b. So you can now see that the number of terms are even increasing and then work is becoming even more and more tedious. So now to make it easier for us to expand, we use what is called a Pascal's triangle. So when you look at the past, uh, what we have down here on 7.1.1, you see that when you have a plus b to the power one, we have those two terms a and one and b and their coefficients are one each. Then when you come to a plus b to the power two, you now have three terms and you can see the coefficients. So the middle coefficient, which is two, is given by adding the coefficients of a and b in the first, in the previous expansion. Then when you come to a plus b to the power three, so you see that when you get the coefficient here, which is one, plus the coefficient there, which is two, you add it to give you the three there. The outer, the first and last term in the expansions are always having 
one as the coefficient. So now you see that uh, here you have one and there two, you add, you get three. There you have two as a coefficient and one as a coefficient, add them, you get that three. Then the last part is B cubed. The first part is A cubed. So when you follow through, you see that even when it comes to A to the power, A plus B to the power four, the same thing is happening. One there plus this three will give me this four. That three plus that three gives me the six here. That three plus one there gives me the four. Then the last term coefficient is one. So doing that, you can see now in this diagram here what's happening. When we just pick out the coefficients on their own, we are forming something like a triangle. And this is a triangle called the Pascal's uh, triangle. Because if we had a plus b to the power zero, we'd have had a one up there. So you find that you'd have a serious triangle there. So you can see what's happening. One, one gives you two, then one, two gives you that three, one, two gives you that three, just like that. So once we know the coefficients in each case, c is to the power one, to the power two, to the power three. So once you just know the first one, you know you can get the others by just doing this procedure. You don't need to memorize. You just have to follow that procedure and you'll be able to get the coefficients. So once we have the coefficients, we write them out, then we look at the way the terms are behaving. You see that when we are just beginning, you see a plus b to the power five. You have a to the power five, b will start with to the power zero. So you have a to the power five, b to the power zero. Plus, so now a will be decreasing in its powers until to reach uh, a to the power zero, while b is increasing the powers. So in the first term, b is to the power zero. Second term, a is reducing from five to four and b is picking up. And the idea is that at whatever term you have, the power of a and the power of b should always be adding back to five. Always be adding back to five. So you can see here, a to the power five, b to the power zero. Zero plus five will give us five. Here again, so you know that, the powers for A are decreasing, then you can be bringing in the Bs that will match up to give a total of five, like that. So that's how we do the expansions. So with that in mind, one is now able to expand anything, knowing that the coefficients will, be, will look like that, and then the powers will be decreasing and also increasing uh, for the two terms, A and B. So that's what is called the Pascal's triangle. So now when you look at um, what's happening, you can easily get the coefficients for a plus b to the power six by simply saying that the first, the first coefficient will be one, next will be one plus five there, which will be six, next will be five plus 10, which will be 15, next is 10 plus 10, which gives you 20, then 10 plus 5 gives you 15, 5 plus 1 will give you <clears throat> 6, and then you have 1 at the end. So always have 1, 1, and you can see the way they, they decrease. The biggest uh, coefficient is usually in the middle somewhere there, depending on whether we are talking of an even power or an odd power. So for an even power, we know that we have uh, n plus 1 terms, so we find that you have one large number in the middle. For an odd power, you have two big numbers in the middle, as you can see in the Pascal's triangle there. So what would be the coefficients for a plus b to the power seven? Can somebody tell us, tell us? A plus b to the power seven, what are those coefficients? Um, they are 1, 7, 21, 35, 35, 21, 7, and 1. Okay, so we have 1, 7, 
21, 35, 35, 7, 1 again. Oh, 21, then 7 and 1. Yes, so it's very easy to get the coefficients. If you already, because you know the previous ones, then you just use them to get the next ones. So uh, by that, we are now able to expand. So when you look at 2x plus 5, plus y to the power five. So you start by first of all, uh, listing the coefficients. So for a plus b to the power five, the coefficients are one, five, 10, 10, five, one. And then when you take a to be two x and b to be y, you now start substituting. So we know that they will have the first term having a coefficient of one, then e, a to the power five, that would be two x to the power five. Then plus, next coefficient is five. Then two x is now reducing the power to four. Then y has, has gained the power. Then again, coefficient there is 10. Then two x to the power three, y is gaining y to the power two. And when you add the three and two, you should get back this five here. So the powers will always be adding to, to any there. Again, you come to 10, then 2x is reducing the power to two, and y is now at three. We go until we reach a stage where y is on its own, it has the coefficient one. Then you have y to the power five. Then you, you now simplify, you know, 2x to the power 5 is the same as 2 to the power 5 times x to the power 5. And then the other one also follows. So once we are done, that's the expansion that we have. Did we all follow there? Yes, madam. Okay. Then we come to b, x squared minus y to the power 4. So you remember uh, what we have been doing, what we know is a plus b, then to the power a number. So here we know we can write x squared minus y as x squared plus negative y for us to now follow what we're supposed to do with the Pascal's triangle. So in the expansion of a plus b to the power four, we know the coefficients are, now we know how to get the coefficients. We have one, four, six, four, one. Then Wherever there's A, we substitute X squared. Where there's B, we substitute negative Y and expand, we have that expansion there. So in this one, I'll go through quick because it's uh, straightforward until we reach the, the binomials, the binomial coefficients. That's where we can spend, take a bit of time. So the next one there, root two minus one over root two to the power six. Again, you can write it as root two plus negative one over root two. Then you, we know the coefficients, they are here. And then taking a to be root two and b to be that, we expand. You have to be cautious as you expand, not to miss anything, especially when it comes to the signs. So don't miss the signs, and then you end up getting that. And these ones, all these just add up to one over eight. Did you try to go through and see that it really adds to one over eight? Yes, we did, madam. Okay, okay. Okay, so let's move to factorials. I know the first part is easy. That's what I've gone through quick. Let's look at factorials. So uh, we, we know what a factorial is. So if we say 100 factorial, you can see you're multiplying all the numbers from one up to 100. I don't know what number you would get. So that's a very big number, which you can uh, either, you can usually because you have failed to, to find the answer, you just write it in a factor form like that but it will be a very long expression. So in the end, we, we use a certain notation which is called factorial notation. So instead of just writing one times, two times, three times, four up to times 100, we can just write it as 100 factorial. 
You know, in mathematics, we are full of symbols. So instead of writing it like that, you write it as 100 factorial. And now we know that n factorial simply represents that. n factorial means 1 times 2 times 3 up to n itself. Or you can start with n itself, then you are subtracting n times n minus 1. So if it's 10 factorial, we are saying 10 times 9 times 8 times 7 times 6 until we reach times 1. That would be 10 factorial. And now there are times that we try to simplify uh, the notations. So one thing we know is that sometimes we can write n factorial in an expanded form as already shown up n times n minus one times that up to one or you can say okay uh n times n minus one times n minus two if i decided to end some to to, to stop i can say then times n minus three what factor because whatever is remaining is n minus three factor or i can say it's just up to n minus two factor or so just depending on what i want to use the expression for so you will see why, why we are bringing in this. You can see it in the example that has, that's coming here. So one thing we should bear in mind is that one factorial is equal to one and zero factorial is equal to one. Then the rest of the numbers, you know, it to be straightforward. Two factorial, of course, is just two times one. It's also just the number itself. So that example there, uh, evaluate 10 factor. Ooh, what did you get? What's 10 factorial? What's 10 factorial? So these ones, let me uh, do it on the whiteboard. So I'll stop sharing this and share something else. Hmm, today we've gone to 35, interesting. So let me share the whiteboard. Okay, so we want to find 10 factorial. So this is equal to 10 times 9 times 8 times 7 times 6 times five, times four, times three, times two. We know when you multiply a number by one, you get the number itself, so I, I'll just end at times two. So how do I solve that and I have no calculator? You're not allowed to use calculators, not so. So how do I solve that quick? Of course, you'll not be asked to find such a big factorial but we'll be using that just for simplification sometimes. So when I'm solving this, when I look at nine times eight, it gives me 72 times 10, I'll get 720. Then times seven times, if I get these ones, I can also multiply them. Six times five is 30, 30 times four is 120. 120 times three is 360. 360 times 2 is 720. So it's like now I'm multiplying 720 by 720 and then finally by 7. And this should give you um, 3, 6, you know, long multiplication. 3, 6, 2, 8, 8, 0, 0. You can see a big number. Yeah, so to, to make our work easy, sometimes we simplify things. I can repeat, I'm, I'm, I will repeat and say that we do not ask you to find a number like that one in the test or exam. Here we are just doing this for the sake of understanding. Then we look at B, a part two. So part two is 12 factorial over eight factorial. So to evaluate this, to evaluate is actually getting the answer, the, the value. So this one, after we have learned that we can always write n factorial as n times n minus one times n minus two times n minus three factorial, 
we can apply that in this case. We can see we have eight factorial down there, and we know in 12 factorial we can find uh, there's an eight factorial. So we can say 12 factorial is 12 times 11 times 10 times 9 times 8 factorial, like that. Then over 8 factorial. So having done that, we know we can now cancel off 8, which will just give us 12 times 11 times 10 times 9. And what do we get? 9 times 11 is 99 times 10, 990. So I'll say I have 12 times 9, 9, 0. Then use long multiplication to find the answer. If you solve, you'll find 1, 1, 8, 8, 0 by using long multiplication, which you learned at is it primary school. So we have simplified that. Then the next example is asking us to write in factorial form. How do we do it? So we are asked to write in factorial form uh, part one, which is 96 times 97 times 98 times 99 times 100. So here you can see that we are really talking about 100 factorial. Now for it to be 100 factorial, there are those numbers from one. So we have one times two times three times four up to times 95. And that can be 95 factorial. So I'd say I bring in 95 factorial so that I make it become uh, 100 factorial. And, but then after doing that, it means I should divide down by the same 95 factorial. And that way we have not changed the value. Then times 98, times 99, times 100. So we see that the numerator is now just 100 factorial. Then down there we have introduced 95 factorial. So we have written it in factorial form. Did I lose anyone? No, I did not No. Okay. Yeah. Then we come to the other one. We have part two, which is nine times eight times uh, seven times six, everything over, four times three times two. So when you look at the numerator, we are talking of uh, something to do with nine factor, because we have nine times eight times seven times six. So you can see that we are going downwards there. So then to complete it, it means we need to have to multiply by a five factor. So we have nine times eight times seven times six times five factorial, which we have to introduce down also. Divide by five factorial and then we have four times three times two, you can even write it as times one there. So then on top, what are we having? We now have nine factorial on the, in the numerator. In the denominator we have five factorial times four factorial. So that's now in factorial notation. Okay. So having a, a non-factorial notation, we, we really need it in the binomial expansions using what we call the binomial coefficients because they use factorials a lot. So we are getting back to the other screen.
where we can read through, then where we need to solve, then we can solve. Okay, no, I think let me even do it. In, uh, okay, let's see, solve on the whiteboard for now. So, um, I want to stop sharing. Do I? No, let me continue. Okay, so we, we, we have uh, the binomial coefficients. So the binomial, co binomial coefficients are written as n that or n. So we're saying n choose r. And what's the definition for that? N choose R means N factorial over N minus R factorial times R factorial. So that's N choose R. So when we look at what we found uh, above where we found nine factorial over five factorial times four factorial. How can you write it in as a binomial coefficient? How can we write it? You can write it as nine choose four. So you can write it as nine choose four or Multiplication is commutative, not so. So it can also be nine choose five. Nine choose. Because <coughs> this can also be written as nine factorial over four factorial times five factorial, which will be uh, nine choose five. So what we got there was actually nine choose five. So n choose r in general will be n factorial over n minus r factorial then r factorial. That's what we have. So the example there is asking us to evaluate the binomial coefficients that have been given here. So those uh, binomial coefficients, that's part A, we have 10 to seven. So this is equal to 10 factorial over 10 minus 7, which is 3 factorial, then 7 factorial. That's what we have. So then we know there's a 7 factorial in 10 factorial. So we can say this is 10 times 9 times 8 times 7 factorial over 3 factorial times 7 factorial. So then we know we can cancel can divide through by seven factorial, you know, just remain with 10 times nine times eight, divide by three times two times one. And then what we get, we can simplify certain things. Uh, two into there are one, two into there are four. We are running out of time. Remember what we usually do, what we always do so you you join back, then three there, one, three there, three. So in the denominator, there's one down. So we multiply that to give us three times four is 12 times 10, we get 120. Then part B, we are getting 100 choose zero. What are we going to get? to be 100 factorial over 100 factorial times zero factorial. And what we end up getting, we are just getting 100 factorial divided by 100 factorial and that gives us one. So any number, choose zero, you find that you'll be getting one. 
So you see why now the coefficients, the binomial coefficients end up giving us one. So compare with the, what we get as the binomial coefficients with the Pascal's triangle. So this one now becomes easier for us. So as long as we know how to get n choose r, then we are good to go. Then 16 choose one. But see, we have 16 choose one. This one is got to 16 factorial over 16 minus one, which is 15 factorial then one factorial. So that will give us 16 times because we know there's 15 factorial here. 16 times 15 factorial over. Madam. Yes. Yes. Why is zero factorial one? That is just the way it is. It's one. Why is it that zero factorial? I'm saying that's how it is. Just like that, it's supposed to be one. Okay. Can it be? Can we it can't. Be proven? We can't prove it. You want to to be given to prove? Whoever discovered it he already found it to be one. Mm -hmm. And it, it will always be like that. You don't need to prove it. Okay. So 16 times 15 factorial divided by 15 factorial will get 16. So you see that any number, choose one, gives you back the number itself. Then any number, choose zero, gives you one. Uh, we are following there. That's what we can see from here. You can do it even in general. N yes. choose one, that will give us N factorial over N minus one factorial times one factorial. So that will give us N times N minus one factorial over N minus one factorial and it gives you back n. So n choose one gives you back n. n choose zero gives you one. Those are the two special results. So now from there, we move on to the binomial theorem. The main thing, eh? the binomial theorem. So in the binomial theorem, we have an expansion. How many minutes do we have? Okay, about six. So the binomial uh, theorem uh, says that the binomial expansion a plus b to the power n is found by n to zero a to the power n. Now you see, why we end up having one as the coefficient of a to the power n, eh? then plus n choose one, a to the power n minus one, then b to the power one, then plus n choose two, then we have a to the power n minus two, and b to the power two plus, um, so we continue like that until we reach, so in general we have n, choose r minus one, then a to the power n minus r plus one, then b to the power r minus one. So you see whatever is being chosen, whatever is down there, is the power for B. I hope we've seen that. So this continues until we reach second last term, which will be N, choose N minus one, then A, then B to the power N minus one then plus n choose n and b to the power n. So that's the binomial expansion in general. You don't really need to start going to draw up the Pascal's triangle because when the 
number n is big becomes tedious also with the Pascal's triangle because you need to, to keep adding things. But with this one, it's general. So this one now you really have to master it. You don't need to uh, uh, derive it from anywhere. So what we know is we have the binomial uh, coefficients and then we see the way the powers are going. So this is a very important result. So you see again in the powers, in the expansion, you can see that the powers start with a to the power n and they start reducing until they reach a to the power zero. While the ones for b start with b to the power zero until they reach b to the power n. And then the coefficients, you can see, you start from n choose zero until you reach n choose n. So it shouldn't be a problem to, to deal with. Excuse me, madam. Yes. Mm, yeah, my question is when solving, are we supposed to indicate the, form, the formula? Yeah, that's the one you are using. Not so, how, how can you use a formula and you don't state it? How can someone guess that you're using this formula? Uh, if you are fine, if you are solving using the quadratic uh, formula, then you just write the answer. How will I know which formula you are using? So before you solve, you sure I'm going to use this formula. Then you'll be able to even for even for yourself, you'll not even be confused because you've put the formula now. You want to follow that formula. So it's always it's just logical that you you state the formula itself as you use it. Okay, any other question? Because we'll start the next section when we get connected back. I don't want to write something and then come and write it again. Because it will be a new session. Any other question? If you can run, run me through the previous formula, uh, my network was breaking, so I couldn't really get most of, of what you are saying. The binomial expansion, is it? This one. So I'm saying that uh, this is n choose. I don't know which formula you're talking about. It's, it's that same one, Aldo. Okay. So we are saying that a plus b to the power n is n choose zero a to the power n plus n choose one, a to the power n minus one, b to the power one, plus n choose two, a to the power n minus two, b to the power two. So you see the way it is, b takes the, the number which is there, the power for b is coming from the, the number which is being chosen, plus, so in general, the rth term is simply n choose r minus one. Then a to the power n minus r plus one, then b to the power r minus one. 